Together with our brethren in the mainline SDA Church, the members of the SDA Reform Movement are waiting for the soon coming of the Lord. But we do have some differences of doctrine, and one that we will be highlighting here is Sabbath observance and worship style. God's last day remnant people are to be restorers. In Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 12, it says, And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. In the time of the end, in Patriarchs and Prophets, page 678, it says, Every divine institution is to be restored. What institution does Isaiah 58, 12 refer to? Well, in Isaiah 58, verse 13, it says, If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. In Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page 63, we read that he referred them to the blessed days of Eden, when God pronounced all things very good. Then marriage and the Sabbath had their origin, twin institutions for the glory of God and the benefit of humanity. Proper Sabbath keeping is truly enjoying the rest offered by the Lord by fully setting aside the things of this world for the sacred hours of the Sabbath. In volume one of the Spirit of Prophecy, starting on page 225, we read, The Lord is no less particular now in regard to his Sabbath than when he gave the foregoing special directions to the children of Israel. He required them to bake that which they would bake and seethe, that is boil, that which they would seethe on the sixth day, preparatory to the rest of the Sabbath. Those who neglect to prepare for the Sabbath on the sixth day and who cook food upon the Sabbath violate the fourth commandment and are transgressors of God's law. All who are really anxious to observe the Sabbath according to the commandment will not cook any food upon the Sabbath. They will in the fear of that God who gave his law from Sinai, deny themselves and eat food prepared upon the sixth day, even if it is not so palatable. God forbade the children of Israel's baking and boiling upon the Sabbath. That prohibition should be regarded by every Sabbath keeper as a solemn injunction from Jehovah to them. The Lord would guard his people from indulging in gluttony upon the Sabbath, which he has set apart for sacred meditation and worship. We cannot take the Sabbath lightly. Its hours are sacred. They are a defining covenant between God and his people. In Signs of the Times, May 25th, 1882, we read, the violation of the fourth commandment is not confined to the preparation of food. Many carelessly put off blackening their boots and shaving until after the beginning of the Sabbath. This should not be. If any neglect to do such work on a working day, they should have respect enough for God's holy time to let their beards remain unshaven, their boots rough and brown until the Sabbath is past. This might help their memory and make them more careful to do their own work on the six working days. No economic transactions should be engaged in during the Sabbath hours. A person who violates the Sabbath by doing secular work or going to the store for shopping or a restaurant during the hours of Sabbath shows that they have no part in the communion of the body of Christ. Instead, embrace the Sabbath as a blessing of the Lord, recognize its holiness, and enjoy it as a delight.